Hi, welcome to this getting started with SPAD.next video. Now, you've gone to the website, you've downloaded the installer, and you've purchased your license. Or, you're running your free trial. Note, the only thing you're not going to be able to do with free trial is run the alpha version or beta version. I usually run alpha. Uh, which gets you access to some of the features that haven't yet been released, including, as of the filming of this video, the LVAR bridge and H-Event bridge, which is needed to do a lot of stuff with aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim, uh, like G-1000 control, uh, controlling working title or fly-by-wire sims, and LVAR specifically for the Aerosoft CRJ. So the first thing you're gonna do when you come in is you're gonna notice the left-hand side icons is your navigation of your different tabs. So on the home tab, you have things like the home screen, news, latest forum topics, because there is a forum that you can go to as well as using the Discord group, uh, but a lot of the forum topics will pop up here. There is an FAQ which loads in like, how do I update my subscription? Well, the information's right here. How to offload FIPS to a second computer. You'll see there was a lot that have been entered. No TAMs, release notes, so you can see all the support uh, from all the versions and what changed. And then of course, there is a change log, which shows you up to the uh, individual dot releases and betas that happened in between. Next up is your Profiles tab, and this is where you can see all of your profiles, including the default SimConnect one that's included. Uh, online profiles, where you can search based on the aircraft, uh, as well as specific people, uh, to find things only related to your installed devices. There's a lot to filter on, but effectively this is to find shared profiles for different aircraft. And then if you've got any profiles that you've published, uh, they're going to show up here. Next up, you've got your controls. And when you have panels like SciTech panels, there'll be another icon that will display. And if you have FIPS, there'll be another icon that displays. So you'll have more icons here on the left. Right now, I have no other devices connected to this system, uh, so you're only seeing my virtual joysticks, uh, as well as some other joystick that shows up, but I can't figure out what it is. So we just kind of go with that. The plus area is the add-ons. This is where we're going to find things like data monitor, event monitors, which we'll explain in other videos. These are very useful for doing tracking of data. So trying to figure out what data is changing underneath the SIM when you're doing things, as well as what SIM events are being sent back and forth. So sometimes you have to use both of these together uh, because even though you may see a SIM event, it might send a toggle command, whereas really you want to see what the data variable is that's changing and you're going to want to control it. Uh, expressions, this is where you can create your own variables based on a expression. Um, quick example, uh, you could pull apart some values to create a individual expression that you pull in as another variable, um, like taking the transponder digits, adding them all up together to create a single transponder code. That is done under the hood by SPAD but there's times where we need to use expressions to create our own things. Scripts, uh, this is where you can add VB scripts. So you can go ahead, make them global profile, attach them to a device. Uh, but this is an actual VB script. Uh, again, you'd want to look at the GitHub um, examples. Client events. Client events allowed you to add SimConnect client side events. Very helpful when between updates of SPAD.next, uh, say fly by wire, add some new events, they register theirs in a way that you can come in 
and you can add those as client side events so you can start working with them. Virtual devices, if you have the license, this is where you can come in and you can add a virtual FIP. And then that way, when we restart it, uh, this space for an icon will now have our virtual FIP uh, and you can add multiples. And these will pop up virtually, drag them around on the screen. And then of course, the debug monitor if you want to debug things. More importantly, settings. So when we first launch it, it's going to actually give you a wizard that you follow along. So when you first launched it, it would have given you this configuration wizard and you would have told it and followed along with the wizard or you would have skipped and come in here yourself. So under registration, this is where you'll see your license. This is where you can reload licenses, buy your add-ons. So if I want to add, buy some add-ons or update my, um, my registration. So renew update subscription uh, and of course deactivate license. Here you also have like jump to SPAD Discord, open a ticket, go to the forums, email, all this information more and more is, is there. Hit help, help will take you down to the help section where you've got your tickets uh, and you've got status of simulators as it finds them connected. So there they are. Back to settings. So that's registration. Application settings under general, automatically check for update. Minimize when starting, exit connection when sim is lost. So these are things that can automatically close and open. Uh, and then behaviors when it launches. Under simulations, you can enable the different pieces that you do or don't want. That way data doesn't show up in assigning events for things that you don't care about. Uh, FSUIPC, again, SPAD.next leverages SimConnect, uh, but it still has support if you want to go through an SF uh, FSUIPC bridge to access data as well. SimConnect support, obviously this one's network for me, so information to connect it over the network to the main sim. PMDG, TFDI, LVAR support, and of course we've got that enabled because I've got the bridge installed, but it'll tell you, hey, you have to make sure you install the bridge. iFly, iRacing, uh, Majestic Q400, uh, and of course, X-Plane. Under profiles, automatic profile switching. That's so that when you change planes, it's automatically gonna switch the profile based on whether you have planes attached to those profiles. Uh, and it'll also prompt you to save if it launches and doesn't have a profile for the specific aircraft, letting you select from, a, from profiles and attach it or uh, choosing to ignore that and maybe building a new profile that you'll attach afterwards. Automatically save profile changes. In my case, I don't automatically save. Therefore, whenever I'm ready to save, I have to press the save button. Then under expert, this is where we come. Remember where the windows are, what update channel we're on, which by default is the release channel. Network installation, uh, well, yes, it's on. Uh, expert mode, do I wanna run in expert mode or not? And this has to do with application descriptions and information. Uh, if it's not on, it, um, it doesn't change the way certain labels label when you have things like conditions applied. Instead, the only way to see the condition is you'll have to go into that event to see the condition. I like to see the conditions because then I, have an idea already what button it is or what thing it's doing. I just care about knowing whether it's the conditioned version or not. Uh, disable unconfigured device wizard. So when it pops up says, hey, this has never been configured. Do you want to apply something to it? I run with that off or on as in disabling it. I don't want it to pop up. Uh, I'm going to go find the snippets or things that I want. Localization modes, so show tags instead of values. Uh, performance monitor, so you can open the performance monitor. Remote service port, uh, and then time in milliseconds to press a button to count as long press. So currently it's one second, but you could change the value of how long is required for a long press. 
directories. So this will point to where you're putting all of your data. Uh, configuration wizard, here's where we come to run the configuration wizard, but also where we've got the add-ons for installing the Elvar bridges for FSX P3D, which is a separate bridge from, say, the Xplane bridge. And then there's going to be another one when we update to the alpha channel, there's one for Microsoft Flight Sim. Of course, in the future, when that becomes released and not part of the alpha beta channel, then of course it'll show up here. Devices, all the different classes of devices that are supported and whether you have them enabled or disabled inside of SPAD.next. Uh, and serial devices where you have to come in to add them one by one manually uh, because you have to point to the serial ports that are plugged in to be able to find them. Appearance, well, I like dark mode and large text, makes making videos easier. Uh, obviously, going with smaller text is going to be better if uh, you're on a smaller screen and you don't worry about videos and of course third-party licenses. So that's it. That's the walk around of the UI and what we're going to find inside of all of these screens. Uh, hopefully that gives you a quick idea, quick layout of where to find stuff. And then moving on, we're going to cover a lot more things in other videos. Some of those videos have already been published. But as somebody pointed out, there wasn't really anything that I did that explained, okay, so I just installed it, where do I go for what? So hopefully that answered it for you. As always, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along next time. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.